Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, John Haynes, A Conversation with Death. The man who rules the world and the angel of darkness take on a horde of demons in this inaugural John Haynes series adventure. Get John Haynes, A Conversation with Death for 99 cents on Kindle or in paperback today. Last week, President Donald Trump met with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in a historic summit where they talked about the North Korean leader giving up his nuclear arsenal. And while many people across the globe were talking about the possibility of the North Korean leader letting go of his entire nuclear stockpile, I was looking at the bigger picture as related to global economics. Now, when I take a critical look at this Trump-Kim summit, I see it from the perspective of your President Donald Trump. And your President Donald Trump probably saw this as one of the greatest business deals to go down in United States history. Now, there are some that would say your President Donald Trump went to North Korea to do this summit as a way to appear presidential. However, when I take a critical look at your President Donald Trump, he's looking at this as a business deal. And this is a business deal that is going to benefit the United States and corporations in the United States, which have global reach. And the reason why it's going to benefit those corporations that have global reach is because instead of them only having access to half of the Korean Peninsula's labor, they now have the possibility of access to the whole Korean Peninsula's labor. And having access to cheap labor is one of the ways that American corporations create profits for themselves. And your Kim Jong-un, looking at those profits, was looking at probably looking at that and thinking this is a way he could enrich himself and continue to live the lavish lifestyle he has enjoyed over the last couple of years. Because when he looks at this business deal, he's looking at these marketplaces opening up and looking at all the money he's going to make overall. So both your Kim Jong-un and your Donald Trump were looking at this business deal and thinking about all the money they were going to make. Now this is going to impact the global economy overall because many, not only American companies, are looking at the North Korean labor pool, but many other Western countries like those in Europe are also looking at the North Korean labor pool. Now, many countries thought they could use Muslims from Arab countries as a labor pool of cheap labor. However, that really has not worked out, especially in the European countries like Sweden, like France, like the UK, and like Germany and Italy, which have seen the Muslim working population that they brought in not bring a return on investment. And instead of that, that labor pool bringing a return on investment, what they have done is terrorized the citizens of those countries and destroyed the quality of life for people in those countries. And when they look at that labor pool, they're probably saying to themselves, this has become a complete failure with these Muslim migrants. And now they're looking at North Korea and saying to themselves, here's a new labor pool and that this new cheap labor pool may possibly work out better than the Muslim migrants that have been terrorizing the citizens of those countries and have led to many of these countries electing conservative parties and changing their, party, their policies regarding their borders. So they're also looking at the North Korean labor pool and saying to themselves, that this may be a better group to export, to, I mean import into the country as a labor pool because when it comes down to their perceptions of Asians like North Koreans, they believe that they are hard workers and that they are more interested in building businesses than going out here to go out and live off a welfare state because when it came down to the migrant Muslim pool, they weren't interested in getting off of the country's welfare rolls. They were only interested in staying on the welfare rolls and then terrorizing parts of the city to the point where in some countries like Sweden, they had no go zone. So they're thinking about 
that North Korean labor pool and that ex and importing that North Korean labor pool because they believe that they could improve the quality of life for the these Western countries and that this group of laborers could also bring a higher return on investment to the country overall and improve the quality of life for people overall. And when it comes down to America, this is what I also believe that they want to do as well, is import a large group of North Koreans as a labor force because, again, when you have cheap labor and you have a labor force that is more interested in building, that benefits America overall. So they're thinking about this from a business perspective and when I look at the Trump-Kim summit, it was more about the art of the business deal, and it wasn't really about the idea of peace or politics. It was more about building both economies and trying to build a platform for building the economy that opens up the Korean Peninsula and opens up North Korea to economic advantages that it would, didn't have over the last 50 years. Now, I believe that Dennis Rodman has to be given credit for trying to open that door back during the Obama years, because if it wasn't for Dennis Rodman being the diplomat and trying to keep the door open, we wouldn't have had this historic summit, because it was your Dennis Rodman who had been panned by your Barack Obama for going out to go out and meet with the North Korean leader back in the days of the Obama years, that led to this summit, because if it wasn't for your Dennis Rodman trying to keep the diplomatic door open, we wouldn't have had that historic summit, which would have which led to the art of one of the greatest business deals in American history. Now, when I look at this Trump Kim summit, it is a business deal. That's what it's all about. It was all about making money for not only Kim Jong un but also for these American corporations. These American corporations, they are sitting in the back, but they're the ones who really want to get that North Korean peninsula opened up so that they can bring their factories to North Korea, so that they can have a pool of labor to work at their factories. Because many of your cell phones, your televisions, your iPads, and your laptops they're all made in Korea. And with the opening of the North Korean Peninsula, that allows those companies to open up more factories in Korea to be able to go out here and have access to the other part of the Korean labor force. So they're going to have the entire Korean labor force overall. And that, again, benefits Kim Jong-un because now he has a stream of revenue coming into his country from American business, and he has access to building up the whole North Korean countryside overall at the expense of these American corporations. And he also has access to the global marketplace because many of those European countries, excuse me, they're going to be thinking about export, importing that labor, excuse me, I keep getting it mixed up, importing that labor to their country because they see that they cannot use the Muslim migrant labor to work in their country and they can't really have them come off the welfare state but with the Korean they know that this guy is going to come in ready to start a business and build a business and that's something they would want for their country so they're looking at North Korea overall and saying to themselves this is a deal that benefits them all, and your Kim Jong-un, again, is going to be the one who makes the most money, but everyone else is going to make more money on the situation long term. So it's a win-win deal from a business perspective, and whether or not you like Donald Trump or dislike Donald Trump, this whole Korean summit, if it works out, would be one of the milestones of his presidency and one that would be hard for any candidate to challenge in the 2020 election because this milestone would be one that would be hard to challenge and could possibly be one of the ones that he could use as one of the major accomplishments 
in a speech when he tries to run for his party's nomination once again. So when I look at this North Korean summit, whether you don't like Donald Trump or you do like Donald Trump, you cannot say that this wasn't a major accomplishment because not only did they disarm the potentially potentially disarm the North Korean threat, but they also opened up an economic marketplace for American business and businesses all across the world. If you'd like to try some of my SJS Direct publications, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com in the description box. And if you want to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.